Welcome everyone to this module on writing essentials. In this module we will be looking at the various aspects of writing in English starting from sentence to a paragraph and so on. Now in this first series we are going to, which is titled as sentences we are going to look up into three things of sentences. First it would be how are sentences made and what are they made up of? In a sense, we are going to discuss the building blocks of sentences. And then we will also look into what is meant by a sentence. What does a sentence mean? And finally, we will also look at the various mistakes that we commit while constructing sentences as in English as second language learners. Now in this video, we are not going to look up the, all the three things, but we will be taking up the first aspect, that is, what are sentences made up of? As an English, as second language learners, one of the questions that is asked by many students is, what should I be good at? Is it reading, or pronunciation, or grammar, or listening? or vocabulary, or writing, speaking, spelling, or body language. But let me tell you one thing. All of these aspects are very essential as, an English, as English as a second language learner, especially at the higher education level. So a student who is pursuing his undergraduate studies needs to assess where he or she stands in respect to these aspects of language learning and then evaluate himself and also try to progress in each aspect of this language learning. So neither of these aspects is has to be learned as a separate mode or only but then each and every aspect of this should be learned by the students and of course when you are in a job scenario or an employment scenario some of the aspects may be more needed and some of them may recede to the background but that does not make us understand that some of these aspects are only important in the current job scenario okay so as we have mentioned earlier, in this video, we are going to look at the writing aspect, of course, the grammar aspect, but then sentences, we do express them while speaking or we understand them while reading or listening. Okay, let's go into the aspect of sentences. Now, which of the following sentences are correct? As English as a second language learner, generally we assume that most of these are right. But every one of these sentences has a mistake in it. They are incorrect constructions of sentences. Let's look at each one. The first one said, I have been to New Delhi last summer. But then, the keyword last summer gives us an idea that this had already been done or it should be written in simple past. So rather than writing have been, the right word would have been went. The second one has an error regarding the misuse of adjective or confusion of adjective with an adverb. Good is an adjective whereas well is an adverb. The third one has a very small error but then it's an error. 
there is a omission of an article A. The fourth one corresponds to an error regarding the subject and the verbs agreement with each other. The next one cons consists of an error regarding uh, the wrong plural formation because children is already plural. There is no need to write as children's. The next one is also one of the errors committed by ESL learners which is uh, which, which talks about the error of writing I'm having uh, in case of have and the last one is an error related to uh, different the usage of degrees of adjectives okay so there are some particular areas of errors by ESL students while writing sentences and the most common or the most important areas are students write incomplete sentences which are also called as sentence fragments so when you're writing a sentence fragment what we're doing actually is we are not writing a full or a complete sentence sometimes students may also resort to write longer than required sentences in, a, in other words it could be two sentences mixed up and written as one long sentences so it also goes against the required property of writing a sentence similarly there could be other mistakes like tense consistency students generally resort to writing too many tense forms in a paragraph are generally giving the reader uh, a confusion of when it is happening the other area of errors is the subject verb agreement. The verb should agree with the number of the subject. If the subject is singular, the verb should remain singular. If the, verb, if the subject is plural, the verb should remain plural. This aspect of subject verb agreement is generally overlooked in some of our writings. And then the pronoun should always agree with the with its antecedent that is the noun this is also sometimes overlooked there could be spelling and other punctuation issues in case of ESL learners so in this first video of this series uh, we are talking about the making up of sentences so we'll be learning why do ESL students face problems in sentence construction what are the building blocks of sentences? What should we know about clauses and phrases and words? Which are the units of sentences? Okay, so we have an introduction already about what, what sort of errors do generally ESL students make while constructing their sentences. Okay, now let's move on. Now this is a flight announcement. Anybody who has ever been on a plane will be hearing this from the attendants. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Air India, Captain Singh and his crew welcome you on board the AI-651 flight to New Delhi. Our flight time will be approximately 1 hour 45 minutes and we shall be climbing to an altitude of 8,000 feet and cruising at a speed of 250 miles per hour. Now generally we in our in our everyday conversation or reading we do not find isolated sentences but all the sentences generally form or part of a discourse or a group or a paragraph. So we'll try to analyze a paragraph and try to understand what sentences mean. Okay, now in this announcement, the very first look at it gives us an idea that this is not just one big sentence. 
rather it is a combination of sentences so let's try to find out what are the sentences in this paragraph and then we understand that good evening ladies and gentlemen makes up the first sentence and then the second sentence would be on behalf of air india captain singh and his crew welcome you on board the ai 651 flight to new delhi and similarly the third sentence seems a bit longer but still it's just one sentence now how did we find out that this is a sentence one common element in all of these things is that every sentence starts with a capital letter and then goes on to end with a full stop or a period now a period denotes that the unit that the thought has ended or this section consists of a complete thought so sentences are the units of thought in language so in english a sentence would mean maybe a group of words which consists of a complete thought a complete meaning which conveys an idea so it can be a small a group of words or it could be a large group of words just like in sentence 3 but it doesn't end there what we also observe in these sentences is that there are other parts this sentence could be uh, dissected into some other parts let's try to observe them now the next big part that we can find while reading these sentences is the clause now what is a clause now a clause is a group of words which has a subject and a verb for example in the sentence on behalf of air india captain singh and his crew welcome you on board the ai 651 flight to new delhi this sentence consists of many words but you observe that after the comma there is a section where you find a subject captain singh and his crew it's a subject and then you find a verb welcome and this is one section so captain singh and his crew welcome you on board the ai 651 flight to new delhi is a clause so sentences are made up of clauses and of course clauses just like the sentences are a combination of words but they consist of a subject and a verb now it can also happen that we can combine two or more clauses in one sentence let's look at the next sentence for example in the third sentence we found that the announce in the announcement we found that it is consisting of two clauses for example our flight time will be approximately 45 minutes and we shall be climbing to an altitude of 8000 feet in these two in these two in this sentence we find that there are two clauses combined with a conjunction and our flight time is a subject will be is the verb that can that makes up the first clause and after and we find we have an another subject and also another verb phrase like we shall be climbing now so sentences are made up of clauses and clauses have a subject and a verb not necessarily a complete thought so what are the two types of clauses now depending on if a clause makes up a thought or has meaning or not we have two types of clauses okay we'll come to that so in if we go to the last sentence we find that it consists of three clauses a flight time will be approximately 1 hour 45 minutes that's clause 1 and it's joined with and and we and the third second clause is followed we shall be climbing to an altitude of 8000 feet and then we also have a third clause cruising at a speed of 250 miles per hour 
In the third class, we may be observing that they haven't written a noun. Of course, the noun would is assumed to be V, which is the part of the second class. Very well. So, as I mentioned, clause means a group of words with a subject and a verb. It can have a complete thought. It cannot have a complete thought. So depending on if it's having a complete thought or not, clauses can be divided as two types. The first one would be independent clause. So in an independent clause, we have a subject, we have a verb, and the thought is completed. So in the sense, for example, in this sentence, Sohan opened the book. Sohan is the subject, opened is the verb, and when we read it, we as we find that there is a complete thought expressed in this sentence. So such clauses are called as independent clauses. And naturally, as we look at it, we find that every independent clause is a sentence by itself. So sentence is basically an independent clause in a sense. Okay. Now, dependent clause means it is a group of words with a subject and a verb but not necessarily a complete thought. For example, observe this sentence. When he won the prize, everyone clapped. Now we find here that this sentence consists of two clauses. The first one is when we won the when he won the prize. The second one, everyone clapped. When we try to observe these two parts, we find that the second part or the second clause, everyone clapped, not only has a subject, everyone, and the verb clap, but it also expresses a complete thought. So that means it's an independent clause or a main clause. Whereas in the first part, when he won the prize, you do have a subject, he, and also a verb, one, but when we read it, we do not get a complete meaning or thought when he won the prize it seems that it's still incomplete it needs some support or it is dependent on the next clause that is the independent clause so this is it so sentences are made up of clauses and clauses and in a sentence they can be one clause or even more than one clause and a clause is basically a group of words with a subject and a verb with or without complete meaning Okay, so let's try to identify the independent clauses in these sentences. Once again, an independent clause means a group of words with a subject, a verb, and also a complete thought. Believing that the pages were in the right order, I mailed the manuscript. If you carefully observe the two sections of this sentence, we find that the second part not only has a subject I and the verb mailed, but also a complete thought. Hence, the independent clause in this is I mailed the manuscript. Similarly, in this sentence, even though I couldn't afford the house anymore, I wanted to renew my lease on it. Once again, we find there are two parts consisting of subjects and verbs each. For example, in the first section, we have the subject I and the verb couldn't afford. Similarly, the second section has the subject I and the verb wanted. But then out of these two, only the second one has a complete thought. Whereas the first one has an incomplete thought. So naturally, the second one becomes the independent clause. Whenever the weather forecasters predict rain, the sun shines. <laughs> That's the irony of it. Okay, so here too, we find that there are two sections, once again, consisting of subject and also verbs. But only the second part here has a complete thought. Hence, that is the independent clause. Okay, in the box sitting underneath my desk, I found my hat. So we have one more sentence. 
to analyze. And we find that the second section is, I found my hat is the independent clause. I called Tom again and the new programs finally arrived. And what we find here is, we find two sections, but both of them are having complete thought. I called Tom again, a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. The new programs finally arrived. The new programs, the subject, and arrived, the verb. And also, it also has a complete thought. So these two sections, or independent clauses. So a sentence can have one or even more independent clauses in it. I went for a walk today and I mailed your letter. I went for a walk today, subject, verb and also a complete thought. I mailed your letter, subject, verb and a complete thought. So both of them combined and you get a one sentence with a full thought at the same time consisting of two independent clauses okay now let's move on even in a clause what we observe is that there are also different parts in it or different sections in it a clause can also be thought of as a different consisting of different sections and we find that there are phrases in a clause now what's a phrase simply a phrase is a group of words which can act like a noun, a verb, an adjective, or an adverb, or a preposition. So, phrases are used to build a clause or a sentence. Okay, so we have been analyzing or dissecting the sentence and trying to look at how it is made up of. So, what we found now is sentences are made up of clauses and also phrases. For example, look at this sentence. Our flight time will be approximately 45 minutes. In this sentence, we find there are three phrases. Our flight time, which is acting like a subject, is the noun phrase or it talks about, it acts like a noun. Then will be is the verb phrase or it acts like a verb. Approximately 45 minutes is the complement and, and approximately is an adverb and 45 minutes is also a noun. So phrases or groups of words which can act like a noun, a verb and a, an adjective or an adverb or a preposition. Okay, now let's try to analyze and find out what are the clauses in the announcement that we have listened before. The first sentence in the announcement was, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And if you carefully observe, good evening is acting like an adjective and ladies and gentlemen is the noun. On behalf of Air India, Captain Singh and his crew welcome you on board the AI-6565 on flight to New Delhi. Once again, on is a preposition and a preposition actually starts off a phrase and that is called as a prepositional phrase. So here on behalf of Air India is totally combinedly acting as a preposition. Captain Singh and his crew once again is acting like the subject or the noun. Welcome is the verb or the verb phrase and you which is a pronoun, makes up the another section of the noun. Once again, on board the AI-651 flight to New Delhi starts with the preposition on. Hence, all of it is acting as a preposition. Let's try to analyze and find out the other phrases in the next sentence. Our flight time will be approximately 1 hour 45 minutes and it goes on. So our flight time is acting like a noun, will be is the verb and approximately 1 hour 45 minutes 
it's the complement or you can say it's an acting like an adverb and then the sentence continues and we have the clause too and we shall be climbing to an altitude of 8000 feet we is a pronoun shall be climbing is acting like the verb and once again the third section is a prepositional phrase starting with the preposition to and so on with the last clause okay so now we have understood that phrases make up clauses and sentences and there are different phrases because phrases they can act like verb some phrases can act like noun some phrases act like adjective or adverb or preposition now let's try to understand each one of them the first one would be the verb phrase now a verb phrase has an ordinary verb or a main verb and may also have an auxiliary or a helping verb let's look at the examples from our reading for example come welcome or come is part of is a verb phrase which is consisting of only one word that is the main verb the second verb phrase has had thought the total section had thought is called as the verb phrase which has two words here one is had the helping verb and thought the main verb similarly was left consisting of two words is a verb phrase which has a helping as well as a main word and sometimes the section can be a bit longer like in the phrase will be climbing where you have a modal verb a helping verb and also a main verb now from this we understand the what we understand is a verb phrase can consist of only one word or many words and if it consists of only one word but uh, that one word would be the main verb and if it has uh, irrespective of how many words a verb phrase can have it should always contain or consist of one main verb okay the second phrase that we would like to unpack is the noun phrase now a noun phrase can have a noun only a noun or it can also have a determiner like a or an or the and it can also have an adjective like good in front of it or a noun phrase can also be a pronoun like we so these all of these like the nouns pronouns determiners or adjectives can come in a noun phrase for example a good flight the whole part is called as a noun phrase and in this noun phrase we have a determiner a an adjective good and a noun flight his crew which is a noun phrase consists of a determiner his and then a crew a noun and then we is a pronoun but it can itself make up the noun phrase okay so noun phrase is a group of words which acts like a noun and it can consist of nouns pronouns determiners or adjectives adjective phrase adjective phrase is also again a group of words acting like an adjective so adjective phrase has an adjective naturally and it also can have an adverb of degree like very yeah so pleasant or very late adverb phrase now adverb phrase means again a group of words which acts like an adverb and it can have an adverb or sometimes also an adverb of degree like quickly and almost certainly both of them act like an adverb and finally the prepositional phrase now a prepositional phrase is a group of words starting with a preposition and adding up to a noun phrase so a preposition plus a noun phrase 
automatically becomes a prepositional phrase. After lunch, lunch is a noun, but after is a preposition, the whole section becomes a prepositional phrase. On the aircraft, on is a preposition, the aircraft is a noun phrase, and you combine them and you get a prepositional phrase. Okay, so let's do a little bit of exercise now. Now, let's go back to the announcement, initial announcement, and now let's try, and, uh, try to find out the different types of phrases in the announcement. Okay, let's start with the noun phrases. Let's pick up the various noun phrases that we find in this announcement. Yeah, that's right. In the first sentence, we have ladies and gentlemen. It's a noun phrase. In the second sentence, we have Captain Singh and his crew. Well done. That's a noun phrase. But then you also have a pronoun, you, so it can also be a noun phrase. And in the third one, we find a flight time is a noun phrase and also a pronoun, we. So it's also a noun phrase. So let's do it again and we observe. Let's go and find out the verb phrases in the announcement. And you're right, the verb phrases do exist in sentence two and also sentence three. And because in sentence three, we have three clauses, hence we have three verb phrases will be shall be climbing and cruising. So whenever there is a clause, we'll also have a verb phrase in it. Let's look at the other phrases like the prepositional phrases. As said before, a prepositional phrase is a group of words which starts with the preposition. So in sentence two, we have on behalf of Air India, on board the AI651 flight to New Delhi, both of them prepositional phrases. And in the third sentence, we have to an altitude of 8,000 feet, it's a prepositional phrase. And also at a speed of 250 miles per hour, it's also a prepositional phrase. Now let's look at the adjective and adverbial phrases. In the first sentence, we have good evening, uh, where good is an adjective and evening is a noun. That consists of an adjective phrase. And similarly, in the last sentence, we have an adverbial phrase, approximately one hour, 45 minutes. So this is about the different types of phrases, noun phrase, verb phrase, prepositional phrase, adjectival phrase, and adverbial phrase. So when we look at the total announcement, these are the different types of phrases we find in the announcement. But even each phrase, we, when we look at them carefully, consist, is consisting of many words. So let's go into the next part, that is the next building block, that is the words. So words are the units that make up phrases and clauses and sentences. So sentences, the building blocks of sentences or clauses and clauses are made up of phrases and phrases are made up of words. So we have now words, phrases and clauses making up as the building blocks of the sentences and each doing its job. So if you look at the word, different types of words in the phrases, we come across so many different words here and they can be classed into groups. So we find we have nouns in this sentence, like in this announcement, like evening, ladies, New Delhi, all of them are nouns. We have verbs like welcome, will be, shall be climbing. And then we have adjectives, good, 8,000. We also have adverbs approximately we have prepositions on behalf of, on, of, at, and to. We also have pronouns you, are, his, and the determiners a, and they, conjunctions, and to. So these are 
the different types of words that are making up those phrases. And words can be divided into different classes. Nouns are the naming words. Pronouns, they can be used in place of the nouns. Adjectives, they always describe something, that is the noun. Verbs, they talk about an action or a state. Adverbs, which add to a verb or describe a verb. Prepositions, they show relationship between nouns and the other part of the sentence. Conjunctions, they join words or clauses in a sentence or even sentences. Interjections, these are some little words which express emotions. And one more essential word class is the theta minus. And they actually add meaning to the nouns, just like an adjective. Okay, so even these word classes uh, like uh, verb, adverb, or theta minor, or nouns, they can also be divided into more groups. For example, verbs can be main verbs and also helping verbs. Similarly, adverbs can be adverbs of manner, adverbs of frequency, adverbs of place, or even linking adverbs. And due to minors can also be like article, possessives, uh, demonstratives, or quantifiers, etc. So what we understand is words can be classed into different types, and even that class of verbs, words, can also be divided into more subclasses. Okay, now the basic groups of verbs, uh, words, uh, which go together are two types. The first is uh, we can class the verbs, nouns, adjectives, and adverbs into one particular group, and they're called as the content words or the vocabulary words. So when we look up in a dictionary, the major section of a dictionary consists of these vocabulary words. So when somebody says that I'm learning vocabulary, it always means that they are trying to learn nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. And these words always evolve. They are more in number and they always grow with the time. So we always have more words coming up in a dictionary and those words generally belong to this group of the vocabulary words. And there is another section of words which are called as the functional words or the grammatical words. And these are something like the engine of a car. And they are much smaller classes because they don't grow with time. The number doesn't grow with time. Prepositions, pronouns, determiners, and conjunctions, they all belong to this smaller group called as the grammatical words. But just like the engine of a car, they do a lot of work in the making up of sentences. Okay, so we can also divide the word groups into two sections like the noun group and the verb group. In a way, the noun and the verb um, they are the two main parts and noun group can consist of pronouns, adjectives, prepositions, determiners and quantifiers and the verbs consist of verbs, adverbs and conjunctions. So these are the two another uh, way of dividing the words. So noun group and the verb group. So let's wrap it up now. So what are sentences made up of? Sentences are made up of clauses, phrases, and words. Words form phrases, phrases form clauses and sentences, and clauses frame the sentences. So words, phrases, and clauses are the building blocks of sentences. So what we have learned up to now, let's sum it up. A sentence is the basic unit of thought in the language. And the building blocks of sentences are clauses, phrases, and words. A clause is a group of words with a subject and a verb. It may or may not convey a complete thought. Whereas a sentence always has a complete thought. So an independent clause can make up a sentence.
but not the dependent alone. A phrase is a group of words which can act like a noun, verb, preposition, adjective, or an adverb. And depending on their work, they are classified as noun phrases, verb phrases, and so on. And words are the building blocks which make up phrases, clauses, and sentences. And words are of many classes and subclasses. So this is the first video which in which way we talked about the making up of a sentence. In the next video, we'll discuss what actually is a sentence, what is meant when we say a sentence, and also when we write sentences, what are not actually classified as sentences or the mistakes in constructing a sentence. Thank you for watching this video. For any queries, you can post your queries on the department below or send mail or even contact us. Thank you.